because the services were, you know, too formal. Everyone on the platform wore a tie. He and his family then wandered over to the Grace Church because they had a great choir. They really did. But before long, we hear that Bubba and the family are now happy at the Christian Worship Center. Uh, things didn't quite work out there. So before long, they moved their membership to the community church because they had great Bible teaching. Yeah, we all like a good Bible teaching. Don't we? But for some reason, it just didn't work out. So they heard about this youth program over at the New Hope Church. And so they, they went there. Now for at least a little while, they are seemingly working out okay. But time will take. I want to ask you the question today, okay? I'm not going to try to be long here, but... What has ever happened to commitment? <clears throat> Why do you suppose that according... Now, I'm a research kind of preacher. I, I, I look things up. I can't help it. But in 2019, there was close to 140 million church members in America. <clears throat> Yet, our country is in the turmoil that it's in right now. Now, uh, like the preacher said last time, oh, I love that. He, he, he was good. He, he really helped me. But there's a passage of Scripture. If my people, now listen, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Turn from their wicked ways. Seek his face. He said, what will happen? I will heal. And then what will I do? I will heal. You know what? We hold the secret to the problems that this country has. Right here. Right here. We have the power, the authority to make a difference. But are we committed? Why is it that the average Sunday school in America has less than seven? Now the average, 140 million now, but an average Sunday, you're going to find less than 70 in church. Why is it that less than 50% of the church membership can be expected on any given Sunday. It's called commitment. If Christian really believe, now listen to me, in a real hell, in a real heaven, how can we be so silent and nonchalant in our everyday walk with God? Amen. The answer to all of those questions is very simple. The vast majority of God's people have made a decision, but they have never made a commitment. Now, what, do I, what are you talking about, Hunter? Okay. I'm going to set this over here just a second. There is a difference between making a decision making a commitment. Perhaps this can be seen more clear in the failure rate of marriages today. According to statistics again, over 50%, and I think it's higher, 50% of marriages this week that will take place this week, there will be a divorce 
within the first 10 years. Yeah. Over 50%. Now they made a decision. The young man said, oh, she's pretty. Wow. And he made a decision. I'm going to ask her to marry me. And the young girl looked at him and said, wow. She made a decision to say yes. But did they make a commitment? Did they make a commitment? Every person who gets married makes a decision. They made a decision. They kissed each other. They took their, their, their prom made their promises, recited their vows, kissed each other, then walked out together to live, but not necessarily happily ever after. Amen. So why did they divorce? I think the answer is very simple. They made decisions, but they did not make a commitment. It's the same in the church. Ooh, it's getting quiet in here. I haven't seen the Doing music like that. I really know how to put a damper on a circus. <laughs> I believe it's the same in the church. The reason that the church is not making more of an impact in our society and in our, in, in our country and in our world today is because members have made a decision, but they don't make commitment. They make an, an, a decision to accept Jesus as their, now this key word here, as their Savior. I didn't want to go to hell. That's the reason I got saved. I want to be honest with you. When they start talking about, hey, oh, no, no, I don't want nothing to do with that. I needed somebody to save me from that. Amen. I wanted a Savior. How many of you have a Savior here today? All right, now wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go to the farm. How many of you have a Lord? That means, that means that means commitment. We have a whole lot of people in churches today that have made a decision. You ask them, do they know Jesus? Absolutely. Well, what are you doing for me? What do you mean? You mean I gotta do something? No, I thought I thought salvation was free. That I didn't have to do anything. Well, James straightened us out and he said, You show me your faith by I, I you tell me you have faith. I'll show you my faith. Yeah. How? By my works. Amen. I'll make a commitment to him. Amen. And I'll serve him. Amen. I'm starting to get excited. <laughs> when a pilot of a giant airline plane, and I, and I don't know a whole lot about flying. I, I, I'm not, I wouldn't, you wouldn't want to trust me behind the wheel. Let's put it that way. When the pilot of a giant airline is speeding down the runway, now listen, I want you to imagine with me. There's a certain point that it comes to where staying on the ground is no longer an option. Think about it. When that pilot crosses that line, he is committed to the air. He will take off or he will suffer tremendous disaster. At that point, the pilot can no longer change his mind. He has made a commitment. Unfortunately, churches are filled with members who have never, listen to me, have never got off the ground. Again, I ain't hearing no. They have been sitting. They have been sitting on the runway of life, running their engines, making a lot of noise. But they've never gotten off the ground on their walk with God. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this. 
this is serious stuff today. We have been planning on it. Have you heard that before? Yeah. Well, but I, I've been meaning to. You know, I, I've been wanting to. And Lord knows I've been trying to. And I've been aiming to. Yeah. And I've been hoping to. But in reality, they've never gone up the ground. Listen, how, how do we get off the ground in our walk with Christ? How do we make that commitment? What do we have to do to be all that He requires of us? Now listen, the, the passage of Scripture that I want us to look at today, you'll find it in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And most of you will be able to quote this with me. The Apostle Paul is very clear in his call for the church, for the Christian, to commitment. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, now get ready, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Now, we're going to just dissect this for just a second, okay? The word present simply means to offer. Lord, I'm offering you my life, my body, my living body, I'm offering back to you. It's a voluntary act. He didn't say, I command you. He said, I beseech you. What he was saying, I'm begging you. I'm begging you to, to do this. This is something that is completely up to you. You make that decision right. and you alone. He says, but there's a motivation for that you to do this. He said, remembering what? The mercies of God. Present your bodies, brethren, by the mercies of God. I want you to close your eyes for just a second, and I want you to think about the mercy that God has given you in your life. The things that He's done for you. The peacefulness that passes understanding that came into your life. Think of the mercies based on what you have received. Can you really? Now look at me. Now look at me. Can you really say you owe him nothing? God, you saved me from hell and promised me a mansion in heaven. We're evil. Can you look at God and say? I've done my part. But you go. No, but no, we can't do that. When we reflect on the goodness of God, how can we be anything other than committed to Him? Paul goes on to say, Roger, that's just a reasonable thing to say. He's not asking me to do anything unreasonable. Right. He gave me life. He gave me hope. He gave me joy unspeakable and full right. of glory. He gave right. me peace that passes understanding. Right. Not as the world gives. I have a peacefulness. I walk around in victory in oh, Jesus Lord. Christ. Right. And because of that, Roger, you presenting and committing yourself to Believers are told that they are to present themselves living sacrifices with the understanding that there's no such thing. Now listen, there's no such thing as a partial sacrifice or a partial commitment. It's impossible to be sort of a Christian or semi-committed. 
It's not possible to be a partial sacrifice.
try to stand here and tell you that I know how it happened. No. Let you know. But when that cocoon opens, out comes one of the most beautiful things that you can find on the earth. A butterfly. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the result of commitment. Commitment. It's the beginning. We prove what is that perfect will of God. The Holy Spirit requires our cooperation. And it requires for us to be obedient. It requires our commitment to Him. Today, I want to see, to share three things with you real quickly about commitment. Excuse me, just a second. I'm sorry. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. You won't pay attention. First was personal commitment. Personal growth. Let me ask you this. It's a, it sounds simple, doesn't it? But are you really committed to your personal growth? Are we committed as disciples, learners of Jesus Christ? In order for you to be all that you need to be, you have to commit yourself to that. We should never reach a point in our lives that we think that we're, we know it all. We can never reach a point that I've been a Christian now for um, 54 years. I've been preaching 43 or 44 of them. And uh, I've never gotten to the place that I thought I knew it all. No. That young man that preached here last night, how long has he been preaching? Five or six years. I sat there and he just filled me full of truth that I had never thought about before. And I learned some things. And I took him in the back there when he came back to me. And I, I took a hold of him and I said, yeah, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. That you feel some voids in my life and in my mind and got me thinking about things that I hadn't thought about before. I was learning. After 54 years, I don't know it all. We all need to be learners. We need to be in God's Word. We need to be in God's Word. this way in Philippians chapter 3 verses 11 and 12. If by any means I may attain unto the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. I want to strive every day that I possibly can to be as close to Him as I possibly can. And I have to commit myself to that spiritual growth, that personal growth. He said, I'm not already attained. I'm not already there. He that endureth to the end. That's the one. That's the one. Amen. Amen. But he also described the vast majority of Christians today. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. He said, I, would, I fed you with milk and not with meat. For until now you are not able to receive it. And even now you're still not able. There's a lot of people in here today going, what's he talking about? You're not able to receive the meat, the truth of commitment in your life. Listen, we have a... We have, let's go back to Bubba. How many churches have he been to? He still had not attained what he was after. Paul was trying to say, we have fed you with milk, but we should be feeding you with meat. Today, make a commitment to continue to grow spiritually. Never give up learning. Never get to that give up personal growth. The second one is commitment to the local body. He's fine. Commitment to the local body. Commitment.
commitment to the, to the church. Oh, by the way, did you know that Jesus is not coming back after me? He's coming back to the church. Are you committed to the church? If you're not committed to the church, you ain't going nowhere. You're not going anywhere with Him. It's the church. We need to be committed to the church. We need to accept the challenge to commit ourselves to be responsible for our church membership. It's not something you need to take lightly. This is, this is a part of commitment. Outside of our personal relationship and commitment to the Lord, the local church is our, is our first level of commitment. The local church, with all of its imperfections, is still the Lord's major avenue through which He accomplishes His work. Amen. This is where you're going to learn personal growth. Amen. This is where you're going to learn how to eat the meat of the gospel. Yes. This is where you're going to grow in your faith. It is the church, and I cannot stress to you how important the church is to you today. Amen. He's coming after the church. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 tells us, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhort one another. And so much the more as we see the day approaching. You see how important that is, that church is? He said, don't you neglect on there. Don't you neglect joining yourself with the church. Don't you accept? And there's where you're going to get your strength. You're going to be exhorted. You're going to be encouraged. Because I'm coming back after the church. But some people don't see the church attendance as necessary. They see vacation as necessary. Yeah. I, my daughter, she's sitting back there in the corner. She sits back there because she wants to be close to the door in case she needs to get out. But as we came to church today, how many times did I point that I'm mowing the grass? That's more important than going to church. Yard work's necessary, right? Keep that yard looking good. We came by the golf course and <laughs> the line was on the <laughs> Yeah. That's more important than church. Yeah. Entertaining your family and friends on Sunday is more important than church. Yeah. Going to sporting events or concerts, that's more important than church. But church attendance and participation in worship, well, we have every intention. And if we can get around to it, I plan on going. We're going to. And if it works out, I, I, I'll, I'll try. We'll see what comes up. As far as, in, in far too many lives, church attendance seems to be re regulated to if I have time for it or if I can get around to it. But if you, are, if you really get to know the people in the church, it will be in the context that you will become involved in exercising your spiritual yeah. gift. Yeah. And that's the third thing. All right? I'm almost finished, so just be patient. Commitment to your ministry. You say, well, wait a minute. Oh, man. Mm.
us in Romans chapter 12, verse 6, that we have different gifts according to the grace that's given us. We need to be part of what the church is doing, not just spectators. We need to be involved, committed with our gift, our ministry that God has given us. First Corinthians, we cannot be spectators. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 says, and Paul tells us, there is diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but in the, the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one of us for the profit of all. You're here not for yourself. You're here for me. I'm not here for myself today. Now think about it. I'm not here. Roger is not here today for myself. I am here that you may profit. I'm using my ministry. I'm using my gift to edify you, to encourage you, to show my love for you, my obedience and commitment to Christ. I'm doing that for you. Amen. We must commit ourselves to ministry. We must exercise our spiritual gift. Now you have one. You say, well, I, you know, I'm not that important. I, I, I really can't do much. Folks, I've got a pebble on my shoe. And it's it's hurting. Old Brother Left Foot there. Brother Left Foot is in pain. And because Brother Left Foot is in pain, the rest of it, you see my eyes? My teeth clench. Now they have nothing to do with Brother Left Foot, but they are receiving the effects of the of the hurt in Brother Left Foot. When I walk. Brother Right Foot has to bear the load. Amen. You know. Because Brother Left Foot here is having some problems. You know. And so now the head of the church, the body here, is saying, uh, let's get rid of the problem that Brother Left Foot is having. So what are we going to do? Well, I'm right here. That's my dominant hand. That's the thing. I, I use this hand probably more, doing more things than this hand. I'm more important than the other hand because this is, I'm right handed. If I'm going to throw a ball, I throw my right hand. But I, no, look at that brother left hand. You're not as important as I am. Right? And that's what, isn't that what we see in church a lot? Isn't that what we're seeing? But we got a problem here that's affecting the whole body. My knees are starting to shake because of the pain. The knees have nothing to do with my foot, but they're my back. Oh. What are we going to do? We've got to get rid of it. I can do it. Okay, Brother Ryan, go down there and get that. Well, it's a long way down there. I'm going to have to have some help. Oh, you mean you're going to have to have some of the other parts of the body helping you to do what you do best. You see what I'm saying now? Are you getting the message here? All right. Okay. Now, right hand, brother right hand. Oh, man, he's good. You know, I use him a lot. He does a lot of things. Brother left hand's over here looking. Well, I'm important too. But I know I can't do as much as Brother Ryan can. But, all right, go down there. Okay. Uh, Brother Lefty, can you help Brother Ryan hand out? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm a little unsteady here. I'll help you. Look at that. Look what Brother Left Hand's doing. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. Now, now, brother, 
down to help me. Let me help you. Let me help you. I mean, I don't want you to look at what Brother Rightfoot's doing. He's burning the whole bone of the whole body. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Wow. But you see how the body starts to work together here now? Yeah. For the good of all. Yeah. Oh, it, 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 all that. oh, man. Whew. What a relief. Man, I can. Look, my eyes are starting. Man. I can feel a relief already. I'm telling you. That was hard. Right. 